Hey guys, I've been playing a little cable lately and thought I would put together a video. And he is deceivingly uh, complex with his kit. He's very tactical and there's a lot more going on than it appears on the surface to really get the hang of playing this guy. So there's a lot to talk about here. Let's just dive right in and we will start out by looking at his traits. His first trait is teleport. This is, in my opinion, the best movement ability in the game. It's great for crossing maps quickly, as you might need to in a rift or in danger room that's timed. And it's also great for escaping from danger or closing in on an enemy, and works very well with one of his abilities, and we will look at that when we get to the ability section. His second trait is super strength. That just allows him to pick up heavy objects and throw them. It's nothing game-changing, but it is nice to have. Now before we look at his basic attacks, I want to look at his damage tags quickly. Because with one exception, everything in his kit shares one damage tag. And that is the energy damage tag. So with one exception, his entire kit scales from energy and mastery. We'll talk about that exception when we get there. First, let's look at Cable's light attack. He fires a shot from his energy rifle. The good things about this attack is the damage is pretty decent and it penetrates, so if you can hit multiple enemies in a line, they will all take damage. The downside to this attack is that the rate of fire is fairly slow, and just like with other characters in this game with a slow rate of fire, you can very easily get locked into one more animation than you intended if you are like me and spam the button. So my suggestion is just try to break that habit of spamming the light attack button if that is your habit and uh, you will avoid getting locked into that animation. The other complaint I have with this light attack skill is that for a gun skill it has a relatively short range. So I uh, do wish this, the range was a little bit longer but all in all his light attack is pretty nice. His next basic is his heavy attack. This is the one exception to his kit. This will not scale from energy or mastery, this will only scale with melee strength. My advice is just not to worry about scaling this attack up. So there are a couple of things to know about his heavy attack, and the first of those is that this is a chargeable attack, so you can hold down the button to charge this attack. I will suggest that if you are planning to use this attack and you want to charge it up, that you equip an ISO or resist being interrupted by a ton is if you are interrupted during the charging you will do no damage. The other thing that I would like to point out about his heavy attack is that if you want to adjust your aim, if you start charging this attack while facing 3 o'clock and the enemy moves to 12 o'clock, if you move your left analog stick, point it towards 12 as you release the button or before you release the button, this attack will shift as it executes so you can adjust the aim after charging this attack. His last basic attack is his air attack. This is just a single shot that he fires from his cybernetic eye but does do some decent damage. The only thing I can think to point out on this is that you can jump, teleport, and fire his air attack but you cannot teleport after firing his air attack even though you are still in the air. So just keep in mind that once you fire this, you're not going to be able to reposition with teleport. Cable's first ability is called Extreme Arsenal. When you cast Extreme Arsenal, uh, Cable is going to start an animation where he looks like he's typing something in on his wrist. After that one second animation, a floating rifle will appear and fire a beam that lasts for a three second duration and it appears that if that beam is on target for its entire duration it will hit the target 19 times so you can take whatever damage number you're seeing from that beam and multiply it by 19 and you'll get at a roughly about what the total damage is from that beam now this being a beam it does have the beam synergy tag and so that means that you are able to get synergy reactions with area barrage beam, explosive, safeguard, and whirlwind tag skills. Uh, this beam is good at breaking destroyable objects in the game, and it is the main source of damage in Cable's kit. 
and it works very well with the other skills in his kit. My one problem with this beam is that it sometimes aims at the wrong target, uh, choosing, for instance, a minor enemy over a boss or something like that, uh, which can just be maddening at times. But that is probably my only complaint with this beam. Overall, it is nice that it kind of aims itself because it will follow targets and stay on them rather than just having uh, the target just step right out of the beam. Cable's next ability is called Gravity Bomb. He fires this Gravity Bomb to an area out in front of him. The area of impact spawns a Gravity Vortex. All minor enemies are pulled toward the center of that vortex, and after approximately four seconds, that vortex detonates, damaging all enemies in its area. Now, this skill does not have a synergy tag, so there are no synergy reactions with other skills, but it does fit well within Cable's kit and sets up minor enemies to be cleared very quickly by either Extreme Arsenal, which is a piercing beam, or his Light Attack, which pierces. Okay, Cable's third ability is called Tech Shield. It's an invulnerability shield. It behaves much the same way as Black Panther or Captain America's invulnerability. It does have the Safeguard Synergy tag, so we'll have Synergy reactions with Bash, Beam, Charge, and Rapid Fire tag skills. And this is great for avoiding predictable damage, and it does allow you to self-synergize with Cable's beam skill, Extreme Arsenal. And one thing that will work well for me is to cast uh, Extreme Arsenal, his beam skill, teleport to the opposite side of the enemy you're attacking, and then immediately cast Tech Shield. But that teleport can come in really handy when you have a little bit more distance than your dash will cover to get you on the back side of your enemy to do that safeguard synergy. So obviously for safeguard synergies you need to be on that back side of the enemy uh, opposite from any incoming damage and I would like to take a moment just to say don't underestimate the damage that you will get from bash and charge synergies I've actually found that that burst works really well with cable, especially if you're just using the R button and not forcing other synergies. Uh, because of that three second window on your beam, you're probably not gonna be standing there holding your shield for a really long period of time like you might be with some other safeguard characters. And that damage that happens quick, the bash and the charge can be really nice uh, with, with cable when he's using that self synergy. While we're discussing safeguard synergies, there's one I think that needs a little bit of uh, extra attention, and that is the ricochet synergy that you get by combining rapid fire with safeguard. And the reason being is only about half of the characters that have rapid fire in this game will be able to reliably produce this synergy. And the reason for that is that for this synergy to uh, occur reliably, the rapid fire needs to be able to pierce through the target, hit the shield, and bounce back. And only about seven of the 14 rapid fire characters in this game have piercing rapid fire attacks. Those are Black Widow, Elektra, Gamora, Magneto, Deadpool, Elsa Bloodstone, and Punisher. I've got a couple of clips here we'll look at and we'll explain uh, this in a little bit more detail. First, we're taking a look at rapid fire that does not penetrate, and then what happens when I try to use it in a safeguard synergy in-game. As you can see, the boss blocks a good amount of the attacks that should be going through. Next, we're going to look at rapid fire that does penetrate, and then what happens with a safeguard ricochet synergy with a penetrating rapid fire in-game. As you can see, there's a vast difference in the two. Cable's last skill is called TK Spike. It's an AOE DOT with no synergy tag. 
Uh, when you cast this skill, Cable's surrounded by psychic energy that does six ticks of damage per second. When you release the button, you get an explosive burst of damage. Now, there is a maximum duration that you can maintain that field for. So if you maintain that DOT field for five seconds, two things are going to happen. One, you're going to have a much larger burst of damage at the end. It's about triple the normal amount of damage and stagger damage. But two, Cable is going to be staggered and receive a debuff. Now that debuff is going to last for 10 seconds. And during that 10 seconds, he will take 60% more damage from any incoming damage. So you need to be very aware of that. Now if you do want to use this skill, it is another where I highly recommend the resist being interrupted by a ton ISO as if you are interrupted during the DOT portion of this skill, you will not get the burst at the end. What you're seeing in this clip here is multiple uh, synergies forced simultaneously. I'm holding ZR, casting beam, still holding ZR and casting safeguard. So I got beam synergy with my beam and ricochet synergy from rapid fire, Deadpool uh, on my safeguard. And then I do the same thing at this enemy right here. And you can see when it works out, it's devastating. Uh, the issue is it consumes a really large amount of EP from yourself and from your allies when you try to sustain this through multiple bosses. And uh, that and, and Oftentimes allies get out of position and things don't work out, but uh, it is fun to play around with, so I thought it would put it in the guide, and who knows, if you put enough practice and, and find the right combination of characters, there may be a way to, uh, to use this more practically. All right, let's take a quick look at the ISO that I recommend for Cable. Now, if you plan to use the heavy attack and TK spike ability, I would highly suggest that you use a resist being interrupted by a ton ISO. If you don't plan on using those abilities, you can forego that one. The other ISO that I recommend for Cable are Energy Damage, Energy Critical Hit, Mastery, and then you can add Damage Resist ISO as needed for the content that you're running. Uh, that's about it for him. His build is very straightforward and he's very easy to gear. At the end of the day, Cable isn't the best or worst at anything. He delivers a solid amount of utility. He has Teleport, which is easily the best movement skill in the game. His beam is more or less a turret, allowing him to supplement with other damage or move on to something else while it's active, or even self-synergize with his tech shield. The tech shield is another great utility. There's nothing more satisfying than seeing that huge damage coming your way, popping the tech shield at the last second, coming out unscathed. His gravity bomb is another great utility, being able to gather up all those minor enemies, and with all the piercing damage in Cable's kit, he makes quick work of those enemies once they've been gathered up. He doesn't have the best trash clear in the game, but uh, that skill easily puts him in the top half. He also has the added fun of being able to trigger multiple simultaneous synergies with AI teammates, and uh, there's a lot of experimentation and fun to be had there while messing around with his kit, so that's a, that's a big pro in my book too. And he does all that while providing fairly solid damage output, but there is also a downside to Cable, and these are the things that drove me nuts while I was playing him. He does struggle against highly mobile enemies because of the nature of his kit being so set up and positioning dependent. Uh, there's nothing more frustrating than getting everything set up and having an enemy immediately move out of that area and then having to go set up on them again. And that just really takes a toll on the EP of yourself and your other teammates. And then the other fault, and this is the one that really got to me, is that he would sometimes have completely unpredictable aiming. And this often affects his beam, his gravity bomb, and even his EX attack. And that last one... Uh, really did drive me insane. I would be facing an enemy that I wanted to use my EX on and instead my EX would trigger on an enemy off to the side that was almost dead already. Uh, that happened so many times and uh, 
was probably my biggest complaint with cable overall. But when it's all said and done, I do think that Cable was a great addition to the roster. He is unique. He doesn't play like anyone else in the game. And I cannot say that I didn't have a good time playing him. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I will talk to you next time.